Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, I'm leaving a, a very nice lunch uh, that I had at the Cheesecake Factory, which is um, I, I, not, not my favorite place usually. I know I, I bitch about food a lot on here, but um, there's something about being handed a giant book of a menu. Um, it's it's I, I hate it. So, uh, but the company was wonderful and, uh, it just, just great ideas got, uh, got me very excited about things to do in the future. So yeah, you know who you are, uh, <laughs> but thank you very much, uh, for, uh, having a good lunch and spending the time and everything else. And, uh, just picking up the menu and picking something and I didn't have to do anything. I could just go, yeah, that, and, uh, that's, that's the best. Like I, and people, um, uh, every now and then somebody's like, Oh, how can I make your experience, uh, better at a restaurant or when you go out? And uh, my answer, I, I say it and nobody believes me, but my answer is just like if I could walk into a restaurant with somebody and just sit down and the person's like, he'll have uh, the steak and a glass of whiskey and I can be like sold. The funny thing is you could say he'll have this uh, you know, piece of crap food and this awful drink. And if you're picking it and I don't have to do anything, I'm still relatively happy. I, I, <laughs> I've reached that point where like make the decision for me and I'm, I'm going to slip so well into a nursing home. It's going to be perfect. That's uh, that's, that's where, that's where I belong. Anyway. Um, so I was reminded uh, a, a little bit later, uh, some people on, uh, were sending me a bunch of messages about um, politics. I've talked about politics um, in, in uh, on this channel before. Um, and I, I, you know, people ask the question, and I give the answer. It's almost always the same answer, kind of routed a different way. Uh, but this time, I want to go back to I think one of the first videos I ever did on it, uh, which was a long time ago, and it was basically about this idea of evergreen politics, and the fact that that if you do things ever, evergreen, it can work, and if you uh, that that's where politics kind of changes. So I want to talk about one piece, all right? Because one piece has plenty of politics. Absolutely it does. Uh, part of the big crux of that story is that uh, the world government is is doing things and, and there are issues and everything else. And that's that's part of the entire point of One Piece is that they're uh, ultimately they're coming in conflict there. Um, so, so every now and then uh, somebody will say, you know, the great part about manga is that it has no politics. But it's not true. Manga definitely has politics. Manga definitely has social content in it. Absolutely it does. But the differentiator is, I think, summed up by that very first video I did about Evergreen. So here's an example. If you, if you watch One Piece or you read One Piece, you are confronted with the world government and the world government doing nasty things. And they talk about various topics like slavery when they go to the archipelago. Uh, there's this entire idea of uh, fishman uh, slavery that goes on, and the uh, fishman island residents uh, are very bitter toward the humans because of the corrupt government and because of slavery. Uh, so you get into some of that. Uh, the, the series tackles topics of racism. It tackles topics of gender equality and, and other pieces there as well. But, and here's the test. If you watch One Piece or you read One Piece today, or 20 years ago, the message around the politics, the message around the social stuff, the message around racism holds up. It, 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 doesn't, it, it actually doesn't rely on anything. There's no subtle allusions to something that happened with uh, Obama or China, you know, taking control of uh, Taiwan or Trump or any of that. It, it doesn't matter. The topic of slavery is not rooted in, you know, some debate about whether critical race theory is real or not, or whether the, uh, you know, the 1682 project or some of these kind of various things. I'm sure I got the year. I've been getting the year wrong a lot lately. Did this video where I said uh, since 2000 in my head, I was talking about the pandemic in 2020, but I left off the 20, and so I just sound like an idiot. It's it's been happening more and more lately. Anyway, uh, that that's. The key with, with politics in a lot of manga is very rarely are they hooked to current events, but they are relevant to current events. It's, it's a very subtle distinction, but it's a critical one. Whereas a lot of U.S. comics are less relevant to broader uh, topics and more relevant just to current events. It's why they age so badly. Uh, 
I, I, and sometimes people will bring up the example of uh, Captain America punching Hitler on, on this cover. And they'll use it as an example of politics and comics. Now, and granted, Hitler has shown up in comics several times, showed up in Fantastic Four. I think uh, John Byrne did a uh, Hitler uh, travel back in time with Nick Fury bit during his run in Fantastic and America Chavez showed up and punched Hitler. That uh, America Chavez, uh, in the first issue of America by Gabby Rivera, she is, I, I don't remember what's going on. She's punching through dimensions or traveling through time or something. And she shows up and she sees Hitler and she punches him. And uh, it's like, I'm punching a Nazi. And she's punching Hitler. That scene is actually uh, pretty evergreen. They may go, wait a minute, that I, I hated America Chavez. That's fine. You know, you could you could love or hate that book as much as you want. But Hitler, as a character, as a as a you know certainly a historical figure, Hitler has become more evergreen because he's become symbolic of Nazis and kind of the World War II and everything else. The image of a of Hitler, it's where. Um, there was some survey that, that came out or some poll and they found that people recognized the face of Hitler and knew to assign Hitler as evil. More people could recognize Hitler and evil than could recognize what he actually did. They knew the name. They didn't know that he was uh, part of Nazi Germany in, in the forties and, and any of that. They didn't, they, they, fewer people knew that part, but the, the face and the name has become synonymous with, with, evil, with fascism, with bad, with bad, okay, Hitler equals villain, so as a result, Hitler becomes more evergreen, if you bring him into a comic, you're, you're really punching the idea of Hitler, it's, it's less political than, say, if you're going to do a comic book where you're talking about, uh, you know, people fleeing ice, which is, uh, Marvel's done, and DC both have done some comics talking about ice and, uh, you know, these overzealous kind of ice troops. And the problem with that is if you were to go back in time again, 20 years, that wouldn't have any meaning. And it's pretty certain based on kind of political changes. If you go forward in time, 20 years, it will have no meaning because that's unlikely to have the same kind of evergreen approach as say the image of Hitler. So, by the way, this all may sound like splitting hairs, but it's actually a very kind of fundamental point. Having, you know, governments and politics in comics and media and stories is a plot point, and it can be very useful and, and good. I, if you, you can do it right, it's fine. You know, there's nothing inherently wrong about it. But if you keep it generic, if you keep it that it can apply to lots of different moments, lots of different things then the story works. The story is maintained. The challenge is when you're writing these comics and you're putting them out, you don't really know how fast something is going to age. For example, uh, the entire uh, Kyle Rittenhouse trial that went on. Um, I know two different writers, one at Marvel, one uh, who's doing an indie book through Image, are going to touch on the Kyle Rittenhouse uh, trial and the whole thing in their comic. They're writing it right now. So if you if you just play this out with math, if you just think about it, if they're writing it here in uh, you know the end of uh, or the sorry the beginning of December, and then it's got to get drawn and then it's got to be printed and it's got to come out. Best case scenario, best case is you are seeing this comic sometime in say April or maybe May. Best case. Will Kyle Rittenhouse and that entire theme still be on people's minds in April or May? Or will it, you know, everything goes through an arc, right? You know, the, the media picks up on something. Then there's a bunch of like the, the late night comedians do bits on them. And then Saturday Night Live does a couple skits. And then, and then TikTok, several videos are out with that. And eventually, like really quickly, we burn through the topic. And then it's considered boring. It's uh, a bit like... Uh, you know, if everybody's telling the same joke and then they kind of run it into the ground and then a month later, somebody comes out and tells the same joke, it feels like just dead on arrival because it's, it's so delayed. And that's the problem with a lot of these topics. You don't know when you're writing them, if it's going to be a bigger theme or not. As a different example, by the way, um, if you were say, uh, you know, writing in a comic book, something about black lives matter, back in uh, May or June of 2020. See, I got the year right. 
Well, if the comet comes out in, you know, June of 2021, a year later, Black Lives Matter is still a thing. It's still out there. It's going to age better than other things and other topics that, that come and go much quicker. Still doesn't mean it's maybe a good idea to do that in your comic, but it has more relevance. Now, we'll check in in two to three years to see if it still does. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's like, uh, uh, it's a bit like when I was reading a, a comic from the 90s. And uh, they in the comic, there's this bit where um, it's Spider-Man. He's talking about Furbies. And it feels like, oh, it's just dated. I think Furbies and Beanie Babies were being discussed in the comic. And it's like, this, this. This is eye-rollingly bad at this point because it's aged out. It's not evergreen. That's how politics are. So when you when you get into these arguments of manga doesn't have politics, no, of course it does have politics. It's just that the politics are written to survive decades of time. You know, uh, one uh, Luffy and crew going up against a corrupt world government that wants to seize power is something that's going to be relevant. I mean. 30 years from now, 100 years from now, that's never going to be a, a theme or a topic that's going to feel stale. Now, if they reveal that the head of the world government looked like Biden, and he's like, he's a, it's a mirror image of Biden, and he's like, you know, got a, you know, Kamala Harris or Kamala Harris, whatever, uh, sidekick there and everything else, that is going to age like sour milk in Depending on your point of view, three years or seven years, we, we they will be gone. At least one of them will. I, I mean, as president, not dead, Jesus. Uh, but but anyway, um, there, it's 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 not going to age well. And and so that's. But if you look at a lot of political themes in manga, for better or for worse. Now the the nice question would be, why are they doing that? Because actually, if you read a lot of manga, even the stuff that's that's very trying to really weigh in on current, you know, themes in Japanese uh, culture and society and everything else, they still like bend over backwards to make the stuff generic, to make it last. And I think there's something just built into the storytelling there where they say, make sure you don't write something that feels old four years from now as elections and, and things come and go, you know, don't, don't wire in Obe to your story. You need to, you know, you need to have more longevity than that. And it, I think the, the problem in the U.S., again, the, the politics is a bit of a red herring when people talk about it. I think it's more just a reliance on current events or reliance on what people are seeing. Because the same thing happens with whatever show is popular. I, I, I mentioned this a, a bunch, and it's one of those cases where you either remember it or you don't. But right about the time that Hickman was doing Secret Wars... Game of Thrones was it was at its height of popularity. It, it hit the arc where everybody was watching it, talking about it. It was just the buzz was on that show, and you had uh, you had a lot of comics borrowing from those themes, and it, it was uh, to the point where it was eye rolling. Whenever it's like you must bend the knee, it's like okay, stop it, just just stop. It uh, it was overdone, and I think that's more the problem. It, when people say, I want my politics out of comics, I think to me, it's not politics. It's I want the copying of whatever is current to go out of comics. I want there to be more of a long, uh, you know, a thought for the future, more of a, a storytelling that was going to survive. I, the idea, like, and you see, by the way, some comics do it. Uh, Chip Zdarsky is doing Devil's Reign. It's like, oh, there's a corrupt mayor. It's Wilson Fisk. And he's going to outlaw superheroes in New York City. We've seen this storyline several times before. And he's going to leverage all of the, you know, shady aspects of the government, or you know, his position of power, in order to, uh, you know, make the make the bad guys the police and the good guys have to expose his corruption. Uh, other than the fact that this storyline has been done several times before, this storyline is going to age fine. Corrupt politician utilizes uh, crooked means to attack good people. Yeah, I, I mean, what do you? Yeah, you know, very straightforward story, very easy, easy to replicate story. Uh, there's there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Other, you know, again, other than you you start to play the same song over and over again, that's that's a little bit different. But that theme is good. Now, 
if in that story they have, uh, you know, they basically you know, start to like, they give the Kingpin a spray tan where he looks kind of orange. And then, uh, I don't know, they start dressing up bullseye like Rudy Giuliani or something. I, I don't know. What, what would they do? Then that's one where it's going to midge- immediately hook it to current themes. And it's it's going to be eye rolling. I think that the the fact that, you know, you, you irritate half, you know, you're, oh, we, we're going to irritate the Republicans who make them Trump. Or we're going to irritate the Democrats who make them Biden. To me, I think that's that's almost a side effect of all this stuff. I think you irritate everyone when you hook too much to current events that age out very, very poorly in your comic. And in many cases, before the comic has even been printed, it's aged out. So anyway, that, that's that's my thought on uh, evergreen stuff in comics. Like I said, I did this video a long time. Funny, I did that video saying uh, evergreen politics are an issue. And I kind of laid out the same case. This is like a good two years ago. And I remember actually Ron Mars, the guy I interviewed, uh, said that was the stupidest video he'd ever heard. So <laughs> it just goes to show that, uh, you know, every, everything, everything comes around eventually. So he probably, he may still think it's a stupid video. I, I don't know. I just, uh, all I know is even going to the comic convention, wandering the, uh, the halls, uh, the art that sells better is the art that, uh, you know, tends to be, tends to survive over time. I wonder who owns that picture of Modoc Trump. Somebody owns that art. They've got it framed in, in their house somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for listening.